Now, we need to talk about a silent killer that takes hundreds of thousands of lives every year. Embarrassment. We don't go to the doctors because we're ashamed of our bodies, and it's got to stop. I read something the other day that absolutely broke me. Over a third of young women are embarrassed to attend smear tests because of the appearance of their vulva and concerns over smells. That is heartbreaking. Ladies, don't ever, ever be ashamed of your bits. Without a smear test, you could die. There is no perfect vagina. They're all different. And even if they do smell, which I doubt they do, doctors aren't going to judge you. They're not going to approach you with a canary. <laughs> You know, Dave, it smells like bin juice. They're good people. <laughs> They're not club reps. Do you know how amazing doctors are? They're bored of genitals. They see so many dicks and fannies. They're not fussed. I know. I speak as a man who goes out with a doctor. The stuff I have to do to my lad to get it noticed. <laughs> We're talking glitter, tinsel. <laughs> At the weekend, it looks like RuPaul. <laughs> It's not just women. Every 45 minutes, a man in this country dies from prostate cancer. Everyone watching this has ignored something because it scared them. So here's what I want to do. I want to tell my most embarrassing story ever. Hopefully, it inspires somebody to go to the doctors. Here we go. <laughs> now, a few years ago, I had a thing that can be only described as anal issues. <laughs> By which I mean there was blood, coming out of my bum. <laughs> Already it's tense, can you feel that? <laughs> we can't talk about blood in this country. It's 2018 and we still have tampon ads with blue liquid. <laughs> Women don't leak antifreeze. <laughs> Once a month you're not like, ooh, slash puppy. <laughs> it's blood. <laughs> it's not blue wicked, so like I say, <laughs> blood was coming out of my bum. So I did what every man would do. I went, right, I'll play FIFA for six months. <laughs> so I'll grow a new one, I'll grow a new one. <laughs> I was terrified, I kept it internal. Eventually, I went to the doctors, and it was scary. I mean, the size of this man's hands. <laughs> <laughs> also, you forget how to talk. I couldn't say bum or ass. I turned into a Victorian gent, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Rather than rolled my ass, I was like, I genuinely went, there's trouble at the mill. <laughs> So he was like, well, take your trousers off. So I did. And then he went, by the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I waddled over. And I waited. In went the finger. <laughs> not the best thing, not the worst. <laughs> I said, what is it, doctor? And he went, you've got a thing called anal fissures. What's that, I said? <laughs> Do you know what it is? I had cuts inside my anus because it turns out, while I've been sleeping, I've been putting my finger up my own ass. <laughs> how do you know, Russ? I'll tell you how I know. I went to a sleep expert, and whilst I was asleep, they filmed me doing it. <laughs> If you've ever seen footage of a sleeping you sexually abused a sleeping you, <laughs> no wonder my eyes are wonky. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, there is something worse than sleepwalking. <laughs> what dreams was I having? But that was the pro oh, look a dragon! <laughs> All these years, I thought I was an insomniac. No, it was just my ass trying to just go, keep him away! <laughs> the point I'm making, it does not get more embarrassing than that. But I'm alive. I'm the boy that lived. The doctor gave me some tablets, and now, just to be safe, I sleep wearing gloves. <laughs> but I learned a lesson. No matter how worried you are, go and see a doctor, because the number of people who don't is staggering. There are over two million people walking around Britain with something serious and undiagnosed. One million people have emphysema and don't know it. 80,000 have lung cancer and don't know it. Over half a million people have heart disease and don't know it. With breast cancer, if you have an early diagnosis, you have a 90% chance of surviving for at least five years. If you have a late diagnosis, it's 15%. 
We're not going to the doctors because we're embarrassed about our bodies. So where do we go? The internet. A place where we go for porn and trivia. <laughs> the internet isn't for your health. To quote my brother, it's for quizzing and jizzing. <laughs> and some of us don't even go online. We store the fear deep, deep inside. Talking to my brother, he's got epilepsy. He had a fit when he was 18. He woke up, we found him, he was in his room, he was blue, it was horrible. He rushed into the hospital, and two days later when he got out, he came into my room, it was about 11 at night, he went, you want Russ? Uh, do, you, do, you mind, do you mind if I, I'll sleep with you? I was like, sure. He slept with me for a year. I was 21, he was 18. I only remembered this the other day. He used to sleep on me. And I was like, why did you do that? He's like, well, you know, sort of, if I had a fit, I knew I'd wake you up. <laughs> But he never said anything. Can you imagine living with that and being too embarrassed to speak about it? I said to my brother the other day, I was like, so what did, what did you do to stop? Did you just get over it? And he's like, nah, looked over one morning, you was fingering your own arsehole. <laughs> I thought... You've really, you're really going at yourself for us. Uh... <laughs> I made my peace with my maker that day. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is going to the doctors is embarrassing, it is scary, but you've got to go, because we all smell. We're all different shapes and sizes. The NHS is one of the greatest things in the world, and you've got to use it. It's better to be red-faced than blue. <laughs>